Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church. This is the prayer of the day. You lift up those we step over in our race to success. You soak our aching feet in the waters of life. You massage hearts bruised by others. We praise you, rebuilder of crumbling souls. You pick those not chosen on the playground of life. You cover open sores with your grace. You wander our streets, inviting those who huddle in the doorways to feast at your table. We follow you, bread of heaven. You gather those who are cast aside by a throwaway society and call them by name. You melt hearts hardened by cynicism with the warmth of your hope. You energize us so we can sprint into the kingdom. We welcome you, delightful spirit. God and community, holy and one, we come to you as your people in worship this day. Amen. This is the call to reconciliation. We walk through life confident, strong, boasting of our achievements, but God sees the hurts we have inflicted on others, the weariness in our bones from chasing after bad choices, and all the foolishness we trip over in the busyness of life. Let us come to God, for the one who listens to our faltering words is the one who gives us the word filled with grace and mercy. Join me as we pray together, saying, We cannot hide from you, everlasting God, even if we were to go from one edge of creation to the next. You speak to us of compassion, but the ways in which we treat others show we have not been listening. You explain your hopes to us. We act as if we don't have a clue as to what is going on. We run as fast and as far from you as we can and wonder why we have no energy to follow Jesus. Yet you search for us in all the deserted places we flee to, never wearied God, so you can take us by the hand to show us the way to life with you. You heal our broken hearts so we can offer them to others. You fill us with your strength so we can bind ourselves to Jesus, our Savior, following him to serve all of your children. This is the assurance of pardon. Have you not been listening? God never tires out, nor is there an expiration date on God's forgiveness. God is ever with us, healing us with mercy and strengthening us for service. If God numbers the stars, surely our names are known by the one who loves us and offers us grace. This is indeed good news for all. Thanks be to God. Amen. The first reading comes from Isaiah 40, 21, verses 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the youth will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. second reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Listen for the word of the Lord. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join your hearts with me in prayer? Holy One, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. This story of Jesus healing Simon's mother-in-law is almost a footnote in the Bible. She doesn't even get the dignity of her own name. Yet I find that it speaks to the greater themes of Jesus's ministry in Mark that uh, began with last week's uh, scripture where we talked about freedom from as the man was freed from the binding of the, the demon to this week's when we talk about freedom for well what is this woman given freedom for Jesus heals her from a fever and we learn that Jesus heals her for diakonos, which a lovely Greek word means ministry or service. It's that same root that gives us the word deacon. She's our original deacon. I know in Trinity we don't have deacons, but if you can think of ministry and service as accompanying every role in the church that is a leadership role. Uh, we have elders. We are commissioning a pastor nominating committee. Every committee in the church has chairs, co-chairs. So many of you take on leadership roles in our church and all of it is diakonos. Now my favorite thing about this word is that literally it means to kick up dust. It's an active, practical, on the move, change the world sort of work. In short, Simon's mother-in-law is lifted up to serve. She's freed for ministry, to kick up some dust and to get things done. She is the pioneer who blazes the trail for that other anonymous woman who causes a little dust up at the end of Mark's gospel by anointing Jesus. And also for another group of women at the crucifixion who stay and keep watch with the vandalized body, even as other disciples panic and flee the scene. As we are all too aware in these days, Illness not only debilitates the body, it can cut a person off from their social life and contributions to the community. And this can be a loss of dignity and purpose. If we take Peter's mother-in-law seriously as the first deacon or dust kicker upper, as a model of ministry, we can see that her healing is also a restoration of dignity. Hospitality, you remember, was highly prized in the ancient world. And for early Christians to be hospitable in a way that advanced the Jesus movement was both an art and an honor. Thus for Mark, the healing in this story is not only a matter of a fever being lifted, it's a matter of restoration to community and participation in the movement. You'll see this social dimension of healing is a key theme to which Mark will return again and again. For Mark, this first day of Jesus's ministry is a microcosm of his mission as a whole. The Holy One of God comes to confront death-dealing forces for the sake of life-giving restoration. Jesus will be resurrected later in the story, but his life's mission is all about 
resurrection. Literally, standing again in the here and now. He comes to lift us into service, to put us on our feet, to reawaken us into dignity, community, and genuine health. Just like it says on the entrance to our church, Shalom, y'all. Jesus and doesn't just say this with words as he does demonstrate it with his actions. He offers and enacts this freedom from bondage. And at the same time, freedom for service, for ministry, for kicking up some dust. When I was a seminary intern in Utkasuk, a village on the north slope of Alaska, I saw this ministry of restoration in person. Heart sickness, which was often manifested in addiction, was endemic in Anubiate communities like the one in which I worked and lived. One young man sunk under the weight of his alcoholism and despair, took a gun to his head in his bedroom. He left behind a young wife, also struggling with addiction, and an infant son. While his grandmother led the mother and child to her home, the other women of the community went to the young man's home and cleaned. When I think of those women on their knees with their scrub brushes, washing the walls of blood and bone, I see ministry in action. I see people kicking up some dust. They were in the work of healing, of restoration, and yes, of providing freedom. Freedom for that young mother to begin the work of healing. Freedom for the grandmother to grieve her son's death and to kick up the dust of change as she raised the next generation. What death-dealing forces should we confront? What life-giving service should we undertake here in Starkville? Everywhere that we live in the world, has issues, demonic forces at work. In Utkasuk, we saw the fruits of the generations stripped of their language and culture, of the introduction of sugar and alcohol to a place that had not known it. Those fruits continued to bear unexpected and horrible things for generations after. In Starkful, I know we have seen other fruits. What can we do? What dust might we kick up, my fellow ministers at Trinity? What do we need to kick up? right here. Following Jesus means having the courage to confront those demonic forces of ruin. It means finding ways, even in this age of pandemic and physical distancing, to tenderly bind up wounds. 
It means not only proclaiming resurrection, but living out lives of resurrection for ourselves and for others. It means doing all of this with our actions as much as with our words. Jesus, we know, comes to us as healer and liberator, calls us to join him, and promises to accompany us all along the way, caring for us as we confront, come near, take hold, lift up, and serve. A great challenge, it's true, it's the greatest of our lives, but God's love, companionship, and power are more than enough. Friends, let's kick up some dust together. Would you join your hearts with me in prayer? God of creation and redemption, your prophet Isaiah reminds us that you have established the heavenly host and invite us to lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. We thank you for this assurance of your strength and power. You have created all things and continue to sustain them. You also come into our present moment our times of vulnerability and trial to renew our strength. And for this, we are thankful. Yet we acknowledge, O oh God, that the realities of the pandemic weigh heavily upon us, upon our children, upon our nation and the entire world. Our crisis feels like an exile because many of us are living with profound isolation and deep vulnerability. Teach us, O oh God, that standalone self-sufficiency is an illusion and is not your will for us. Help us to discern our deep interdependency with one another and with you. Help us to trust in the comforting words of the prophet Isaiah that remind us that you give power to the faint and strengthen the powerless and that those who wait on you shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. These words affirm that you, O oh God, can make a way when there appears to be no way. Thus, we continue to pray for weary healthcare workers in the trenches of this pandemic and for all who are now facilitating vaccinations. We pray for your comfort for all who are sick and for all who have lost loved ones. Empower us to be agents of love and justice for all who are suffering in our midst. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are invited as an act of worship to make our offerings of the first fruits of which God has given us. You may send your offerings to Trinity through the online giving portal on our website or by writing a check and sending it to our church office. You may give of your time and your talent and your energy. Would you join your heart with me in prayer? You lift us to our feet so we can walk with you, loving God. And you fill us with your gifts so we may pour them out for those around us. 
take what we offer and use them in that kingdom work which strengthens the weary, feeds the hungry, and gives hope to the despairing. Amen. Friends, they will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table in the kingdom of our Lord. Our Savior invites all those who trust in him to share in this feast he has prepared. May God be with you. May God be with you also. People of God, open your hearts. We open our hearts to God and to each other. Let us give thanks to the living God. With joy and praise, we offer our thanks to the one who offers abundant life. In the morning, awakening God, you took creation and flung it to the far corners of chaos, naming the stars twinkling in the night, shaping deserted places for prayers, feeding all the creatures in the fields. You long to walk with those created in your image so we would not weary but we listen to the boasting of death as it proclaimed sin's opportunities. You sent the prophets who cried out, haven't you been listening? Don't you realize what God is doing, trying to do for you? But we continued to delight in all which opposed you. So having created all things, you became the one thing we needed, our savior. With those so weary, they cannot take another step. With those revived by your grace and hope, we lift our praises to you now and forever. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of all knowledge. All creation sings glad praises to you, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who came for our sake, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, star namer, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your son. He became weak, so the power of the world would be shattered. He became poor, so we might be filled with the riches of your grace. We went to that deserted place we call the grave, so death might be knocked off its pedestal as you breathed new life into his knackered spirit. As we search for him in our time, as we would proclaim the gospel, may we find that mystery we call faith. Christ died, not boasting in himself. Christ was raised. The gospel lived out in him. Christ will come to take us by the hand, giving us strength. Here is that bread which, though broken, can strengthen the powerless. Here is that cup which, though emptied, can fill the weary with hope. Pour out your spirit not only on these gifts, but upon your children gathered around the table. We come bone tired, so make us bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. We can barely take another step, so empower us to walk beside the lonely and the homeless. We are so fatigued by our despair. Feed us with your joy and hope. So we may proclaim your kingdom to everyone we meet. And when the day comes to gather with all your children around the feast of the lamb, we will join hands and dance around the table, singing your praise forever and ever. God, our creator, Christ, our servant, Spirit of newness, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Friends, wherever you are around your table, whether you are alone or with a companion, whether you have a donut or a bagel, whole wheat or white, whatever you have, you have the bread that is the body of Christ. We know that on the night that was his last with his friends, his disciples, Christ sat at table with them. 
just as you are doing now or just as many of us long to do again with our friends to simply sit at table and break the bread. And he took the bread and he gave thanks to God for it and he broke it. And he shared it with them saying, this bread is my body broken for you. Each time that you break it, do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and giving thanks to God, he poured it and he shared it with them, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Now each time that you drink this cup, you remember my saving death until I come again. Friends, now each time we break this bread and drink this cup, we remember the broken body of Christ and make Christ whole where we live. May you share this bread, strength for the journey. Let us share the cup, one cup for one people. Would you join your heart with me in prayer? Holy One, we ask that we may be strengthened for the work ahead, that we too be lifted up by the healing hand of Jesus to go and kick up some dust in whatever way we are called and equipped to serve. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, God sends us forth into the world so we will go to walk miles in the shoes of others. Jesus calls us to serve everyone we meet so we will become all things to all people. The Holy Spirit encourages us to let go of our gospel-given rights so we may breathe new life into the faint. Go in peace. Shalom.